Hello and welcome back to All My Art and Soul. And yes, how did I start this? Uh, these three pieces um, that are titled Start to Finish for Mixed Media Abstract Art. So I just decided just to do a little quick review and um, not to repeat myself, but I remember um, searching out the sequencing of layers and all of that. So I hope this is helpful and it's just a little bit more detailed. So if you're liking this content, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And um, let's get on with this video. So as you can see, um, those were the three. They're eight inch by eight inch. I taped them together with the yellow tape that it still sort of tore a little bit, but a lot less than the blue or regular masking tape. Started with marks, then I couldn't find my gesso or locate it. It was a big bucket, so I was looking for a small my small one and decided to use white paint instead. So um, if you're looking at the marks, it's a layer of marks, mark making, activating the surface, then veiling with white paint, more marks, and now I'm adding, I would still call these marks. And in the future, um, in the near future, I'm going to be experimenting with some dark over light and light over dark and revealing layers underneath. So right now, I'm having fun with my color shaper. And just, uh, it's, it's a nice big uh, tool for the size of these. And what I'm doing is I'm preparing myself and I think I'm, I'm there for transferring this to large work um, on canvas. And so a transparent layer of nickel azo gold as my um, just a little bit of color. Thinking of monochromatic and I mostly did, but later on, in yeah in this one uh, near the end I do decide to add uh, that turquoise color in a collage and in some paint so what I'm playing with here is um, in my mind to get this effect in, in my mind's eye of course that I've been uh, planning for a while is how to start different ways to start different combinations of layers and then once I build up two, three or so layers on these, and I also think in the future I want one big solid piece to work with and then cut it up, um, just getting enough so that um, I've activated it and then I can, I like them square. I guess I don't have to be square to rotate them around and... Um, see what happens and letting my, the intuitive process really work here because I could not plan these things. And as you build up more layers, allowing it, and, and if you're a beginner, I remember I, I, it took a while for me, and that's just me, some, some people might just hit the ground running with, with this uh, abstract mixed media collage and the sequencing. Um, I don't know if it's become because I was coming out of representational work or just work with watercolor. It, th that doesn't matter. I'm in it now. So as you can see, I'm letting these the marks help me create the shapes. And I'm going to be creating some other collage paper in the next set using um, just... Um, subtle differences in blues or whatever the, the, the value is and just using the um, Abrer uh, just like I did here uh, but for the collage paper with the same paint colors so they are they're all in the same color family and they all look so good together so right now I like doing this because I don't want to do too much thinking about shape I just want shape to happen and evolve naturally so I'm really liking, as I've said before, the transparent 
paper where you can see layers underneath, but that's not all we need to use. Further on in the video, you'll see that I use uh, opaque and different patterns, but building to a point where it's very busy and then I need to go backwards with either white, black, opaque um, areas of these little eight by eights to calm them down, to veil, to refine shapes and areas. So let's see what happens here. And I know this is, this is um, uh, from video, from the first video, but I thought I would um, re-explain why I make the, made these choices. So I hope this helps. And you see how I'm putting those black blobs, which are fabulous. I don't think that was ink. I think it was just the fluid or, or I added water or a medium to the black paint so it would be really fluid. And I like to use my mark making tools or even a fan brush. And so I'm just making shapes. And I like how these relate to the lines that are already there. So, and you don't have to match the lines. You can just cover it up and just leave the lines um, hidden or as a background and just peeping out. Um, you don't have to follow those lines for your shapes. It just looks too forced, you know what I mean? They're just there for you to use and to respond to. Now see how that curve, I like how it echoes. So you're using repetition, you're creating patterns with line. And for me, with these types of collage, um, I'm making, um, I'm using my line or um, just the uh, element of line early on, but with collage. Now in the future, I think I am going to hold off using the collage later, later in the process. So there was um, the beginning. And now we're going to move on to where I'm at now. So adding uh, weight to the bottom. And so that is some collage, a combination of some collage and some paint. So it's covering it up, but it's really dark. So that will leave an opening for white text, high contrast. And I'm really loving that um, stencil at the top. Um, that's the middle part of that stencil girl stencil that I'm using where it has the um, positive and negative. So then I decided, oh, so if I like one, let's do more with the black finger mark. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see um, all the turquoise and all of the collage pieces that I have placed above. This time I think I overdid it with the selection and I know other, other, you, uh, other mixed media artists have mentioned this as well. Having too much can just be as difficult as having none at all. So I'm really going to lessen my selection next time and only if it really speaks. But yet you see, I would have, I would not have known that until now, until you make as many little collages, because in this way you can explore, um, build on your experiences, see what works, um, what doesn't work. That could be personal. It could also be a compositional thing. And plus have fun. And these, these um, seem to be building up a, 
let's say a section, I'm not going to say a quadrant, where maybe they are, maybe they'll end up, but a very narrow one in the foreground, which is pushing that, uh, the other layer further back. And it's very interesting. I think I did that with the um, uh, Journey of Three Paintings. If you have not checked those out, um, I really love those. They're resting in my studio, waiting for titles. Sometimes titles come right away, but I've just been so busy. So when you, when I loot with my other thing that I'm doing, uh, which is very, 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 very important, and that it gets my full attention. It's just being able to split, segment your thinking so when I, when you do that as an artist, I tend to lose the flow or connection. So I have to reconnect to those paintings, sit and just look at them, and then start coming up, start finding words and going from there with my little titling process. How do you title your work? And if you're interested, leave a comment. And maybe uh, that will become a video. Or if you have not joined my Facebook group, hop on over. Um, our first video is going to be tomorrow at Studio Sundays, starting to explore, re-explore again color. So I'm really liking how these are turning out, though they are still very, they're very busy. But all the more you have to choose from and to cover up. And when I, I find I'm privileged in that, um, well, maybe not privileged, lucky, I don't know. Um, I get to see, uh, my head's in the way there. I get to see, again, um, in hindsight, I guess, but one generation away, the further you are from your work, I believe the more objective it, you can be to make some decisions. Um, uh, that brown swirly stuff that I did with the string on my jelly plate with raw umber, it, it's okay. I find it to be more distracting. So on all of them, I will cover that up. And I might go neutral. I might go black than a neutral. Um, I might add a bright color and then put the black over so I can scrape it through, like more of that orange. I think that might be a good idea. What do you think? <laughs> uh, I got some comments today. And thank you very much, everyone, for commenting. Oh, I love responding to your comments. Um, I think, I'm not going to mention names, but I think, uh, which is because I know I know the name of this viewer, they didn't, the, in the journey of three paintings, they didn't like how I covered up the circle and the court. You know what I forget? I even almost forget what I did. So I went back and looked at the piece and go, yep, it had to be. It just, it was stopping the painting from evolving, even though that was a precious part of it. That has taken a long time for me to learn. Um, letting go so you see that newsprint paper that I'm using? It, f it ages really nicely, especially if it's been sitting on a table. You know, who knows? You make all this collage, right? And then it sits around and it just ages like a fine wine. You know, it's pretty cool. So I'm just, just thinking about negative shapes. I have a lot of solid shapes, but I don't have any open shapes besides the brown or umber ones that I want to cover up. Um, let's see. Interesting. I'm liking that circle that's hidden. So things hidden are really a big part of this next series. Of course, digging in into ourselves, going inside and exploring what is in there and has been given to us that we don't even know, but 
a lot of we are becoming more aware. All right. I might be coming to a decision, and I like that I didn't trim it so it was even so it was in the middle of a square. It's sort of um, asymmetrical in a way. This choice is more subtle and not bad, though the, that other choice would have been interesting too, but it was conflicting with the, the one on the left. If I was to put that open shape, negative shape, yes, that's looking really interesting. Okay, you know, I cannot wait until, oh, look at that. I changed my mind on camera. Yeah, nope, I didn't like it. Wow. Okay, onward ho. So let's see, what might my, okay, so I've got some more, similar, oh, I like that. But then I like the white paint underneath it. Oh, you see? Hanging on to precious things really slows you down and that kind of thing. So I think what I'm doing is trying to think of the same, you know, uh, a vertical rather than a horizontal section. Let's see what I come up with here. Now, this is beaut. Oh, yeah. Wow. That looks really cool. Almost looks reflective. You see, not until it's dark did that show up. Wow. I hope I make that decision and keep it there. Let's see if I do, because I forget. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I don't remember. Oh, there you go. So. See how it went with the curve better if while, um, while moving it up a little bit? And then I can deal with the underneath part um, later, which I think might be teal or a blue-black. Um, it might These might be choosing to go in that direction. And this is, this is another great topic. When does your work start speaking to you? Do you allow it to speak to you and you follow it? There's, there's the key there. And it is incredible. Of course, you have to, you know, after you, you have that little um, session, then you spin out. <clears throat> then you let it rest and, and see, well, what do you like as to, you know, what happens? So I'm still very unsure. This is really interesting. Or I just didn't have quite enough. I think I'm deciding. Yes, see, so I did decide to move it up and it does look better. And you see that shape, that horizontal curvy linear that fades and stops? I couldn't never have made that. Now, I'm not sure about the newsprint collage on the left, but I can stain that, cover it. And I think I might, and just leave the little section there. Okay, so much mixed media, not enough time. What do you think? So as the, the edges build, I don't like them folding around the back too much. There's that yellow tape, try not to snip that. And these really thicken up. Mind you, this is just, you know, uh, they almost like skins. Um, so when they're like this, it, they're excellent to mount on a cradle board or uh, your birch panel. And I have a whole bunch of eight by eights. So I can show you how to do that. And then you can just pick your best ones, you know? There it is. So I've been debating. And that's why I point to that turquoise. It was saying... Since the red is there, the yellow is there, the white and black, the blue just lets it sing. Now, notice how um, torn that piece of collage is. It's very interesting. 
Um, if you don't want your edges like that, but you don't want to use scissors, um, you can tear. So I'm just, just looking at that part. Yes, too bumpy. You can use a ruler and uh, metal rulers or anything with a nice sharp edge, uh, especially um, newsprint. Of course, the other very thin papers you have to cut because they're too delicate. They'll, they, they won't tear in the direction. You have to find the direction of the paper. That's all relates to the fiber. And so I chose to put it the other way. Very interesting. So I'm glad some of that brown is being covered up. And I think I will come in with either similar gray, like neutrals now that there's so much color going on. I might add a little bit more turquoise, but in paint, of course, similar color, a different shape, maybe some open shapes, maybe some stencil. So that'll be in the last little part. So, so this, what are we on, part three? So this will be a part four, and then we're gonna move on to some new stuff. So I'm just trying to create some videos ahead of time um, as I'm having some renovations in the house and my studio, just for a short time, needs to house all the the kitchen cupboards and all that kind of stuff. So, so that piece you see was too light. It didn't relate. Now, that is darker, but it's a different blue. It's more of a paint blue. It's too blue. It's too purpley. So, if I need to make some collage with black and teal, I may, or I might just use, there it is. This is the Liquitex um, fluid. Now I find the Liquitex fluid um, still needs, if you want to make drips at all, still needs to be um, thinned down. However, you, you can use a little water, probably shouldn't. You can use the uh, very thin, uh, like it's an airbrush painting uh, that thins it down. But right now I'm just experimenting with opacity and translucency here. I thought, well, let's bring that high contrast of white and black down. I know that there was a good layer. I could have let a, put a better layer of the gloss medium on there and adding blue collage, yes. So, yeah, so, so still experimenting and being able to remove if it goes too far. You see, right there, that did it. Oh, now, if it doesn't come off, I could, that's perfect, perfect. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about that at this point. Maybe more yellow would have been better. Um, but I think there's enough yellow in there and who knows what I choose to do with the bottom, the one on the left with the big black section. And so in this one, uh, which started the blue from the beginning, I'm noticing I just wanted to put a little bit more there and then you see, just push that back and it looks like it goes underneath. So we've got different things going on. And these are just sort of like little accents because I want them to relate to each other by color. Ooh, interesting. I don't know if I like that. So of course I need to lift a lot of it off. So just that little wash, and I just leave a little touch on there. Or no, I don't, I didn't like it. Okay, so much softer. So there's very soft layers, um, crisp 
edges, soft edges. And then you know when it when I come to a, a point where, okay, I don't know what to add. I think this little session is done. Let's see what I do. Aha, uh -huh, I was wondering about that. So more nickel azo gold. And it is an amazing glaze because it can go from orange to like a yellow without being too yellow. And I like that I filled in the circle. It just pushed it back a little bit more. So that warmed it up and it made the blue more blue, of course, being complementary. So just getting rid of a little bit of the high contrast for these pieces is working. So yes, so I've got the white and black piece here. So I'm just going to bring up, yes, that works. And of course I have the, for line, I have, and of course more of this orange and yellow collage that you see above. Also, Posca markers for the lines. And has anyone here used the Sakura? Um, is it are they crayons and the Woody um, Stabilo, Stabello Woody uh, crayons? I need to order some. I have not used those yet. Okay, so these are really looking good. So I hope you enjoyed part three and I will see you in the next video.